In this lecture, we're going to look at how to use a web view inside of Fuse. So what is a web view? It allows us to display some web content natively on the device. So this means things like a web page. We can embed it inside of the app. And then this displays natively on a, either an Android or iOS device. So let's start off by making a doc panel. Inside of the doc panel, I want to make a status bar background. And we can dock that at the top. And what this does is it allows us to keep our status bar at the top. And it means our web view doesn't overlap the status bar. Okay, so next, I want to make a button. The button is going to have a clicked event. And when we click the button, I want to do something called load HTML. So this is quite an interesting one. What actually we're doing here is we're loading HTML into a web view. We're not even looking at a web page at this point, or we won't be rather. Instead, we'll be loading our own HTML and displaying HTML inside of the web view. So in order for that to work, we need what's known as a target node. And a target node will be our web view itself with a UX name of simply web view. That allows us to determine a target node for our load HTML. So we'll pass in that web view. And then we have a HTML tag. And inside of our HTML tag, we need to essentially tell Fuse that what's coming next is some XML data. So we need to use the character data. And inside of our character data, we can put anything we want. So inside of this array here, we can put our HTML content. So perhaps we'd have something like a H1, which says, hello world, maybe a H2, welcome to my Fuse application, and so on. Let's give this button a text event of Lord's HTML. And for now, we'll also dock our button at the top. We'll ensure that we dock fill on our web view. And that should fill the rest of the screen. I need to move the square bracket back to the C data. And then once we save our file, you should see that we now get the Lord HTML button on screen. If we select Lord HTML, this currently doesn't work because what we need to do is move this back up to be on the same line. So when we save our file, we should now see that we have load HTML. But when we click this, nothing happens. And that's because our web view is part of a native view host. And what a native view host is, is essentially anytime we're dealing with native device APIs, we need to wrap it inside of a native view host. So if we select load HTML, we should now see hello world and welcome to my Fuse application. But perhaps what's even more important is we can do things like saying style equals color red, font size, maybe 50 pixels. And if we save this, and then we select our load HTML once again, we now see that we have a much bigger hello world and it's also red. So for whatever reason, if you did want to interact with the web view and you wanted to push HTML to that web view, you certainly could using this method. But what if you simply just want to open up a particular page? Well, that is also possible. So I'm going to comment out the button for now. And we'll start navigating over to our web view tag. And our web view tag actually has the ability to pass through a URL. So if we said HTTPS paulhalliday.io and we hit the save button, our application should refresh, but this time it should be giving us a different URL. As you can see, we now have the paulhalliday.io site. And inside of here, we can do things like we usually would. We could scroll up and down. And the user can interact with the web page. So far, so good. But perhaps what's even better is that we can actually interact with the JavaScript on this page. So let's look into what's known as the page loaded event. When the page is loaded, we can actually hook into this and we can evaluate some JavaScript. 
So let's push and evaluate JS. And we must return something. So whenever we're using evaluate JS, we need a return call to be the final statement inside of the evaluate JS tag. So for example, we could capture things like the protocol and the current URL. So for example, if we had a response, we could capture the URL as an object by saying something like document.location.href. And you remember that's because we actually do have a document inside of the web view. So the document does exist here. We also have things like a protocol if we wanted to see which protocol we were over. So we could use the document location.protocol. And we do need to return the response at this point. And then inside of our JavaScript, we could have what's known as a module.export. And that, of course, allows us to turn this into a common JS module. And here we can use on page loaded. Get that response. And simply log out to the console using the JSON pass. Our response.json. And for example, if we wanted to look at the protocol, we certainly could. The final thing to do is then hook up this evaluate JS with the handler function that we just created here on page loaded, like so. And you can see inside of our console now, we now have the current protocol, which is HTTPS. We could look at other things, like for example, the URL, and that would give us the current URL, as you can see here on screen. So being able to have access to that document is quite important actually, because we can do fun things. For example, we could have a document.write, and I wouldn't advise you to do this, but we could just say hello world. And this then replaces our content with hello world. So as you can see, there's a variety of things that we can do here, and we can really take advantage of that web view if we really need to get down and dirty with evaluating JavaScript. So. In this video, we've looked at using the load HTML to load specific pieces of HTML into our web view. And that was done by a button click. But we've also looked at things like setting a URL on our web view. We've looked at the page loaded event and hooking into this on page loaded, evaluating specific things like, for example, the current document location, the current protocol, even writing to the document, and a variety of other things. So this is effectively how we use the web view inside of our Fuse applications.